Many of us are drawn to the idea of angels as lovely, winged beings or cute infants with halos and harps, but it might come as a shocking surprise to learn that the angels described in the Bible do not match the images we often imagine, or the ones shown to us in the media. In all of the 66 books of the Bible, only 10 names of angels were mentioned, while in the apocryphal books there are two others Raphael, Book of Tobit, and Uriel, two Esdras. While each of these angels has its roles and purposes, their general duty is to guard, protect, and act as messengers between God and humans. However, out of the hierarchies, choirs, and hosts of angels, ten angels were quite distinct, as their relationship with humans could not be overlooked. The very first set of angels mentioned in the canonical books of the Bible were the cherubim and seraphim. The cherubim were the angels assigned to guard the gate of the Garden of Eden after the fall of man. These angels are the keepers of the celestial world and hold knowledge of God. The prophet Ezekiel had a vision where he saw the form of these angelic beings. He stated that they each have four faces on four sides of their heads arranged in a square and can turn to different directions at the same time. The word cherub comes from the term to guard, which fits well with their role. However, it is worth noting that nowhere in the Bible are cherubims directly called angels. Many of the speculations were attributed to the appearances described in the scriptures. Their role is to guard God's holy domain and presence from any sin and corruption. They are sometimes known as the throne angels, as they are seen to be around the throne of God. The seraphim, on the other hand, are only described in the Bible on one occasion. This is in the book of Isaiah when he was commissioned by God to be a prophet, and he had a vision of heaven. In the vision of heaven. The only critical distinction between the cherubim and seraphim is the is there form. Cherubim have four faces and four wings, while seraphim have six wings. Whether they are only made of wings, we do not know, and it's hard to picture such an image. Furthermore, due to the complexity of the description of these angels according to the Bible, we can say that angels are not gender specific or how do you describe the seraphim as a he or she. The central purpose of the cherubim and seraphim is to sit near the throne and serve God. We do not know for certain how many there are, but it's clear from the scriptures that they are of great numbers. Known as the most cherished angel in terms of the Christian tradition, perhaps because he announced the birth of John the Baptist, where he appeared to Zechariah, and our Lord Jesus Christ, where he appeared to Mary, is Angel Gabriel. He is mentioned in both the Old and New Testaments, where he acts primarily as a messenger of God. The angel Gabriel also appeared twice to Daniel. In these passages, we learn that the angel Gabriel appears in human form, but he sometimes has a look about him that causes trepidation, one such that could make a man mute in fear. Daniel also attributed his form of appearance to supernatural power. He stated, while I was still in prayer, Gabriel, the man I had seen in the earlier vision came to me in swift flight about the time of the evening sacrifice, swift flight, meaning that he appeared in a way that was out of the ordinary. While Angel Gabriel is often associated with messages of goodwill, Angel Michael is often depicted as a powerful warrior figure. He is the head of the host of armies and is commonly known as an archangel. He is called the chief of princes and he works to protect God's people. Also, it appears to be that Angel Michael is the leader of some group of angels, as referenced in the book of Revelations. Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought back, fought in the Bible. An unnamed angel speaks of being delayed in reaching Daniel sooner due to opposition along the way. Still, the archangel came to his rescue. Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia, he said. The prophet Daniel is told that Michael the archangel is the great prince who protects his people. The fact that Michael is considered a great prince indicates that he has authority in the spiritual realm. In the book of Tobit from the Apocrypha, which is considered inspired by the Catholic Church, Angel Raphael features prominently. In that account, Raphael disguises himself as a human and acts as a companion to keep Tobias safe on a journey. He chases away a demon and heals Tobit, Tobias' father, of his blindness. Because of these actions, Raphael Raphael is considered by Catholics as the patron of the blind, of travelers and of physicians. Angel Raphael identifies as one of seven archangels who stand before the Lord. Raphael also offers prayers on Tobias' behalf and Tobias, in turn, thanks the angel because he is filled with all good things through him.
Raphael is also mentioned several times in the Book of Enoch as a holy angel who heals diseases. Following this account, it is possible that Raphael was the angel who came and stirred the water of the Pool of Siloam in Jerusalem for healing, according to the Book of John. Angel Uriel is considered to be an angel of wisdom and also one of the archangels. He is revered as the angel who illuminates the path of divine truth for those in search of knowledge, solutions, or guidance. Uriel is often identified as a cherub and the angel of repentance, and he is speculated to be the exact cherub assigned to guard the gates of Eden with a flaming sword after Adam and Eve. In the Anglican and Eastern Orthodox churches, Archangel Uriel is considered a saint. According to Catholic tradition, Uriel is considered the patron of confirmation. The Book of Enoch mentions Uriel several times, emphasizing his holiness and terrific nature. In the Jewish tradition, Angel Uriel is listed as one of four angels overseeing the four quarters of the earth, the other angels being Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael. There are quite a few instances where a particular angel is constantly called an angel of the Lord, but upon close we see that this angel is God himself, Yahweh, revealing himself in the Old Testament. Some believe this can be a pre-incarnate Jesus, but that is never made clear. In the book of Genesis, for instance, this angel says they will increase Hagar's descendants, to whom she replied, you are the God who sees me. Bear in mind that angels are only messengers, and they do not have powers beyond what is given to them. These words, thus spoken with such conviction and assuredness, give us the notion that the angel of the Lord is God himself. As there are angels who minister to God and worship at his throne, there are others who fall out of grace and have been cast out of his presence. These angels are known as the fallen stars. Although Satan has gone by many names, Abaddon is not one of them. Mentioned only once in the book of Revelations, the angel Abaddon appears to be one of the fallen angels. He works under Satan and rules over an abyss full of locusts that will arrive on stage during the final days. The locusts will bite, sting, or cause pain to those who do not believe in Jesus Christ. However, there is a debate about where his allegiance lies as he serves under the devil and would also be used as an instrument of judgment wielded by God during the end times. Before his rebellion and fall, the angel Lucifer was a beautiful creature made with fine stones and gems. Lucifer used to be a cherub, angel of light, and potentially an angel who made music. As the Bible states, he swelled up with pride. He wanted the worship in heaven to be directed toward himself, so he managed to get one-third of the angels to turn away from God. Now that one-third are demons. On earth, Lucifer has a temporary home. Rain is prince of the air at work in the sons of disobedience. He has control of this world and masquerades as an angel of light, and he will do anything to drag as many people to his fiery fate as possible. The book of 2 Kings narrates how an angel put to death 185,000 Assyrians who invaded Israel. While some interpretations suggest that the events in Exodus chapters 12 regarding the death of the firstborn of Egypt could also be an action of an angel. However, the Bible did not directly attribute the death of the firstborn to an angel. Regardless, while the Bible does describe angels carrying out tasks commanded by God, it does not plainly state that there is a specific angel of death. In the Bible, angels have served as messengers, guiding and communicating with saints throughout their journey. But these seven saints have not seen or heard the angels, because they were murderous, thieving, and immoral. Join us and explore how these seven evil people became Roman Catholic saints.